we had the opportunity recently to speak to a group of people and one of the primary questions i asked them was why they think marketing sucks uh, what they think is wrong with marketing what they hate about it what they dislike about it um, and this is what they said here's 13 reasons why marketing sucks and the antidote number one there's not enough measurement the antidote is you've got to measure what matters Einstein famously, famously said not everything that's measurable is worth measuring and not everything that's worth measuring is measurable you've got to focus on the key it could be one or two things that are measurable and absolutely measure the hell out of it not enough measurement is a poor reason why marketing sucks it's a, it's it shouldn't be the problem absolutely number two there's too many bs merchants well this is the same of any, of any industry of course but ultimately businesses are to blame stop going with people who don't have proven experience and results stop going with people who've been doing something for a very short period of time and have no credibility in the space and go with people who've been doing it forever and have loads of credibility of course it's going to cost you more but if you buy it cheap you buy it twice and in the term in the context of marketing for your business why would you buy cheap cheap isn't going to get you the result never does um number three it's too complex ultimately you need to break marketing down break it into simple pieces do one piece a quarter frankly do one piece a year it doesn't really matter but make it make it achievable and realistic for the business it shouldn't be too complex and if you're working with someone who's making it too complex that's a big alarm bell they should be making it easy for you number four am on number four i am on number four it's too fractured it's too chaotic and crazy we don't know where everything is ah. line it up it should be linear on a monthly basis you should be able to go from a to b and say right we're doing that 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 keep it simple that's the phrase keep it simple stupid i'm not going to call you stupid but keep it simple it shouldn't be complex it shouldn't be fractured number six i think one two three four five sorry forgive me i was stealing one from you number five don't give me more work marketing oh it's just gonna make more work it's gonna really drive us mad you know uh i, I just don't need the hassle i've got a day job it should give you more control not more chaos marketing absolutely in your business if you own it doesn't need to mean more stress it should mean less if you're doing it right and doing it right is not rocket science we train people in one day to own their marketing and to be able to have the brand and the strategy and the plan to be able to take that out and outsource it get it off their desks you know lots of people in life will advise you to get rid of the small tasks off your desk and focus on the big tasks worth the most money marketing is a great example there are lots of qualified experienced marketing juniors marketing freelancers marketing vas who can lift most of the heavy stuff get it off your desk so it's not about more work if you've got more work if that's why your marketing sucks get rid of it number six where do results come from we don't know anything well ultimately they're your numbers it's your money put in place at the beginning or even better whoever you're using to do your marketing tell them yes but how are we going to measure it how are we going to know what success and failure looks like how are we going to measure how are we going to know uh, our customer how are we going to know our campaigns how are we going to know the impact what what's going to be the outcome and how will we know when we get there so that's number six i believe number seven uh, it doesn't ever feel urgent marketing is such on the back it's so on the back burner we never have time for it we just can't get to it but the reality is all that means and i know this from harsh experience is that you will speak to I will speak to a client and they will say, oh, we haven't sent an email in weeks. Uh, they probably aren't a client or we would have sent an email, it would have been structured, but a prospect will say, oh, well, we've got an email list, but we're very inconsistent. We really don't know, you know, we don't really have a plan. It, it's never urgent, it's never important. The problem with that is you're in reactive mode and you need to be in proactive mode. Reactive marketing is terrible. It's, ne it's never as effective as proactive. It's always more costly. It's always more risky and damaging. Number eight, I think. Am I on number eight? I've lost track because I didn't number my list. Intangible assets. What do we get in return? Even if you're measuring ROI, even if you're measuring ROI, ultimately, you have to build what matters and what measures. 
you cannot have intangible assets as an outcome from marketing. Whatever you're doing, think of ways to turn it into value. It's not just some ethereal world that's suddenly going to throw customers at you. And if it, and when you get it working, even without doing all the work, if you have control and you're working with great partners, they should be building tangible assets. An email list, a Facebook page, conversation growth, organic this, paid that. One of the biggest problems with paid anything is that there are three types of media, paid media, owned media, and earned media. The problem with paid is it doesn't leave you with much once you switch the tap off, but it could. So how can paid media lean, leverage your owned media, your website, to create earned media, user-generated content, or reviews, or buzz? Think about those things. It should be tangible. should leave you with value. Number, God, I've totally lost track. Number nine, I think. Uh, we always have to pay for the work and not the result. Why can't anyone do it on performance related? This is the worst, um, for me, the worst reason why marketing sucks because it's the most unfair. Now, I would say that because I work in marketing, but here's an honest view. The reality is most marketing can do the job of bringing people to the shop or to the website, but we can't own the sales. Now, you can, you can build in performance related on targets. Nothing's stopping you doing that, but you have to except there is some element of the work that you're going to have to pay for. Uh, I mean, imagine if you built a house and then a year later said, said to the builder, but I didn't live in the house. Can I have a refund? The builder's going to laugh at you. And rightly so. Marketing will build you a house, but you've got to live in it. And you've got to close those deals and, and get people over the line. Number 10. Apologies for the sniff. Oh, a bit of hay fever today. Does anyone believe any stats anyway? Well, this is a really fair point. Anyone who throws stats at you can throw stats at you that matters. So you need to own your stats. You need to, at the beginning of a project, decide what KPIs, what key performance indicators are going to matter, how you're going to measure them, what success and failure looks like, and then the stats you get will be believable. Otherwise, if you're just getting stats from someone and you're totally disconnected or disassociated from it, they can prove anything. It's hard to know. Ultimately, beware the spreadsheet warrior, in my experience, both in sales and marketing. The people who spend all their time building amazing spreadsheets, um, building amazing stats programs, I'd rather see a couple of simple stats to start with, just some basic action-based metrics, behavior-based metrics, and then let's reward the behavior and get to the action. Um, number 10, I think, yes, number 10. Uh, in my grand list of things that people hate about marketing. Um, big cost and no early trust. How do I know you? How do I give you X thousand pounds? And, and you know, you could just be throwing it down a hole. Ultimately, everything's a risk in business. You've got to mitigate that risk. For most, when they spend money in marketing, uh, they, they've had at least one bad experience. It's backfired. Our advice is take it slow and steady. Build the trust. You know, really take small and baby steps. We often advise clients who, who want us to come in with a full-on pitch. Actually, it'd be much better to spend one day with us. Work on the, the, the pyramid and the strategy. Get that bit right, because that's a tangible asset they can take away. It's much less value to us, but we're going to then know if we can work together. It makes for much better relationships. It's always a lovely moment when I say that to a client. And they're kind of like, wow, you're not trying to take more money off me. You're trying to take less. Some people think that's nuts. It works for me. And it, and it speaks to my values personally. I'd rather, you know, overperform, uh, over deliver and underperform. I've got it all the wrong way around there, haven't I? Uh, I'd rather over promise, under promise and over deliver. God, blimey. That was a mouthful. I'd rather absolutely over deliver. Uh, in the early days, build the confidence, get through the uh, the trust curve quicker. Um, the uh, 11th is there's too much commitment without enough understanding. Um, ultimately, it's your business that leaves money on the table. You need to know more. There's no getting away from that. In the same way that you wouldn't just not want to know about your finances or about your HR risk or about your IT matters, you need to know about marketing. Um, you have to have 
um, a commitment to at least owning it and controlling it. Doesn't mean you have to do the work, but you do need to do, to know more. Ultimately, you know that is a reason why marketing sucks, but that's why anything sucks. That's why IT sucks. That's why finance sucks. It all sucks. Of course it does. But you've still got to own it if you want to be in business. If you don't want to own any of that, go and get a job. You don't have to worry about any of that. But you won't make make the high return uh, for taking the risk. Um, number. 12 i think we're at number 12 or third no we're at number 13 i hope someone will fact check this and tell me how many there are actually in it uh there's no barrier to entry so marketing is awash with suboptimal practitioners everyone's been stung um it's it, even in the early days i was stung by a supplier or two uh that doesn't mean they're evil it just means that we didn't get it right they sold too hard they sold me the wrong thing that i didn't need and it didn't work out ultimately my advice to anyone is beware the short term, beware the inexperienced. If, if your gut tells you cowboy, it's probably a cowboy. So uh, there is no barrier to entry. And there is a lot of, uh, you know, chaff in the market. Make sure you end up with the wheat. So get your sorting hat on and uh, pick wisely. So that's my 13 reasons why marketing sucks. And I hope uh, that helps you.